Inside Israel came under fire. More than 150 rockets were launched as Gaza terrorists made an all-out assault on the Jewish state. What provoked the strike and what might happen next? Chris Mitchell brings us this breaking story. I'm here in the Israeli coastal town of Ashkelon, about five miles from the Gaza border, where Islamic terrorists have been shooting rockets at Israeli towns and cities since the early morning hours. So far, more than 150 rockets have been launched at surrounding communities. That's sending Israelis running for shelter. Israel's Iron Dome intercepted about 60 of the rockets, but some have caused damage and a number of injuries were reported, but no deaths. Gaza terrorists unleashed those barrages of rockets early Tuesday after Israel killed a senior Islamic Jihad leader in a targeted strike overnight. In the past year, this arch terrorist was the main generator of terrorism from the Strip. He initiated, planned and carried out many attacks. He fired hundreds of rockets at communities in the Gaza periphery whose suffering we haven't ignored. He was in the midst of plotting additional attacks these very days. He was a ticking bomb. Israel responded to the rocket attacks by launching further airstrikes on terror targets in Gaza. The IDF said Islamic Jihad Abu al attah was responsible for launching rockets at Israel, sending killer drones and sniper attacks against Israeli soldiers. They described him as a ticking time bomb that was planning an imminent attack. Also overnight, Syrian media reported an airstrike against the head of Islamic Jihad in Syria. Israel did not comment on this strike, but analysts said he was the leader directing operations in Gaza, and Islamic Jihad is backed by Iran. Israel responded to the rocket attacks by launching further airstrikes on terror targets in Gaza. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said the security cabinet had voted unanimously days ago to carry out the operation in Gaza. It was planned to inflict minimum damage on the civilians in Gaza and was intended to save Israeli lives. He said Israel would do all it needs to do to defend itself. The latest round of violence comes as Israeli politicians are struggling to form a new government after two elections. Israeli President Reuven Rivlin called on Israelis to stand united for security and put politics aside. I'm Chris Mitchell reporting from Ashkelon near the Israeli-Gaza border. And you can be a part of standing united for security. We've set up this wonderful fund for CBN Israel where we help victims of terrorism. And just yesterday, we finished delivery of five tons of fire suppressant uh, to the, the areas, the settlements, the cities that are near Gaza, near these rocket attacks. Uh, and you can be a part of it. How? By giving to CBN Israel. You can call us, 1-800-700-7000, or you can write to CBN Israel, CBN Center, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23463. We also have a text. You can text to CBN Israel, 71777. In other news, atrocities in Syria are raising questions about the president of Turkey's White House visit. Ephraim Graham has more of our top stories from the CBN Newsroom. Gordon, Turkey's President Recep Erdogan is set to meet with President Donald Trump at the White House tomorrow. The visit comes a little more than a month after Turkey's invasion of northeast Syria. President Trump has come under heavy criticism for pulling U.S. troops out of the area ahead of the invasion. A bipartisan group in Congress has tried to stop the visit. Human rights groups say Turkey-backed troops are committing atrocities against civilians and targeting Christians in the area. Hundreds of thousands of civilians have fled their homes, some of them into neighboring Kurdistan in northern Iraq. CBN's Operation Blessing is on the ground in Erbil, working to provide food and other necessary aid to refugees there. Working with the Kurdish Barzani Charity Foundation, the ministry has helped to provide hot meals to Muslim and Christian refugees. It's also provided bags of food to about 160 Christian families. We're providing hot meals, boxes of food for the families, and the most needed relief that they need right now. Food, shelter is so needed. These families, they lost everything again. To give to Operation Blessings Disaster Relief Fund, simply call 1-800-700-7000, or you can text OB Crisis to 71777.
16 states are under winter weather advisories as a major blast of Siberian Arctic air is pummeling the East Coast and the Deep South. As George Thomas now shows us, the deep freeze is creating chaos at airports and on highways. The Arctic blast is bringing snow, freezing rain, and record low temperatures from Texas to Maine, making this large swath of our nation feel a lot more like the middle of January than the middle of November. More than a month before the fall season even officially ends, millions of Americans like Chicago resident Steve O'Brien already feeling the powerful Arctic blast are asking, it's winter already? O'Brien had to use an engine cover this morning to scrape the white stuff off his windshield. There are certainly more graceful methods out there, but this was just the hardest, straightest thing I had on me, so I'm like, all right, that'll, yeah, that'll get the trick done. Up to half a foot of snow fell across the Chicago area Monday, turning into ice as temperatures plunged by nightfall. It's quite invigorating, uh, to say the least. You get a little, a little uh, nature facial. The weather led to problems at Chicago's airports, including a plane sliding off a runway at O'Hare. When we first hit the ground, I didn't feel that the plane wasn't actually stopping. It, was, it kept on going. It was sliding on the ice. Fortunately, no one was hurt. More than 1,000 flights had to be canceled due to the weather. Winter storm Caleb is expected to barrel through the east coast and deep south today, with much of the area seeing lows in the 20s then through parts of Florida and the northern Gulf Coast by Wednesday, with lows in the 30s. And when all is said and done, the National Weather Service says more than 400 cold record temperatures will be shattered by the end of the week. George Thomas, CBN News. Turning now to Washington, President Trump and the Democratic-led Congress are bracing for their biggest showdown yet, as Democrats will take their impeachment case public starting tomorrow with open televised hearings. Until now, the investigation has taken place completely behind closed doors. Already, Democrats and Republicans are disagreeing on who should be called as witnesses in the probe. President Trump is working hard to reach African-American voters, recently launching a Black Voters for Trump initiative. As CBN's David Brody now reports, being a vocal supporter of President Trump can come with plenty of criticism from friends and family, but being an African-American supporter of Trump is even more trying. I'm looking at it from the outside, but then also having the opportunity to go inside now. So. When I met 24-year-old Devin Smart outside the White House, one thing became perfectly clear. I believe that President Donald Trump is going to win 2020 by a landslide. It wasn't always this way, hardly. He grew up in a family of diehard Democrats and attended an historically black university in Hampton, Virginia. While at college, Devin started researching Trump for himself and a specific line resonated with him. What the hell do you have to lose? I was just looking at his different policies, the things that he said that he was gonna do. I said, okay, I'm starting to like this guy, but I was scared to say it out loud because I knew I was gonna get judged. While he didn't vote in 2016, soon after Trump became president, Devin outed himself on Twitter as a full-fledged Trump supporter, complete with the Make America Great Again hat. The Democratic Party has been manipulating the black community for over 50 years, and I was simply tired of it. The insults came quickly. I've been called a coon, a bootlicker, a Uncle Tom, all of these derogatory terms simply because I support the president. And then came more fallout. Twice he's been asked to preach at a spiritual revival conference in Virginia, and twice he's been disinvited. The pastor called me and said, unless you go on your Twitter, and say that you do not support the president, I can't invite you here. I said, well, tell me, tell me where in the Bible does it say that I cannot preach at your church because I support the president? And he said, well, there's a lot of people at my church who doesn't support the president, and when I seen that, they, were, they would be very upset with me if you come, so I have to take away your invitation. Although the pastor hung up the phone, Devin still remains dialed in for Trump. He says he's not been disappointed an historically low unemployment rate for African-Americans, a groundbreaking prison reform law, and allocating a record amount of federal money to historically black colleges. And those achievements, by the way, may be just paying political dividends. In 2016, Trump won 8% of the black vote, but a new poll now shows him with almost double that, 
15 percent. That is the loudest I've ever heard anything in this room. Devin came to the White House in October as part of the Black Leadership Summit. As a Christian, he experienced something pretty cool. It started when talking to a friend before the event. She said, I would love to pray at the White House. So at the end, me and her both said, hey, President, President Trump, can we pray? And he pointed at me and he said, come up and pray. But she had just told me that she had a dream about praying at the White House. I looked at her, I said, go ahead. And so she did. God protect us, God protect our president as he's going through so much right now. Devin went through a lot as well for publicly supporting the president. He tells me many more like him are still out there, but they operate in stealth mode. Blacks for Trump, I like those sides. I had over 100 messages on my Twitter of people saying, Devin, I support the president, but I'm not as strong as you to come out and say it in public. I have a lot of people who support President Donald Trump, but they just, they won't say it. It's secret. And they're gonna vote for him in 2020. I'm telling you they are. The Trump campaign is sure hoping Devin Smart is brilliant in his prediction. David Brody, CBN News, Washington. This coming March, CBN is bringing you the epic story of St. Patrick. The brand new movie was filmed on location in Ireland, and it features Lord of the Rings actor John Rhys Davies. Here's a first look at the trailer. It was not my grace, but God, who conquered in me and who resisted them all that I might come to the Irish nations to preach the gospel. The preconception that we've got about St. Patrick is completely wrong. Ireland was a place of barbarians at the end of the world. Get going, boy. It is slavery for life. Patrick, you are to travel to your homeland. Patrick. Patrick. You're alive. You're alive. To hear the call to go back to Ireland terrified him. It was asking a lot of this man to do this. This does not have to be, Patrick. It is the will of God. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Who among you heeds the call? But why would this man put himself in danger among enemies who do not know God? People thought that this mission was crazy, that his efforts to Christianize Ireland were doomed to failure. Tell us the secret you know about Patrick. Things in the past can come back to haunt us. <laughs> Take him. It's time to go. I'm not finished. Again, the film features John Reese davies and it looks quite good. Gordon? Well, it is quite good. Having looked at the uh, initial cuts of it, this is going to be a wonderful film. It'll show you things about Patrick that you didn't know. Uh, we celebrate St. Patrick's Day on March 17th here in America, and many of us don't know the real story, uh, how he was one of the greatest missionary church planters of all time. He single-handedly converted an entire nation of pagans to the gospel and did so heroically. Uh, and what you may not know is the first time a Christian ever wrote against slavery, and that's because Patrick himself was a slave, was delivered from that, only to return again to preach the gospel to the very people who enslaved him. If you want to get advance tickets of this, this is a two-night-only Fathom event, March 17 and 18. And we've got a website for you where IamPatrick.com. We also have uh, on the Fathom events, you can see uh, a theater near you. Uh, so, boy, you can't 
I'm not sure you can read the I am Patrick website on that graphic, but I am Patrick.com. You can go there and uh, find how you can get advanced ticket sales. Uh, do it now, and, and uh, we've got ways where your whole church can go. You can have groups that go uh, and celebrate St. Patrick's Day uh, in 2020 the right way with the real story of his life. It will inspire you. My hope is it will inspire a whole new generation of missionaries. Terry?